right, everybody, welcome back to Friends for Life's Midweek Mini. Thanks for tuning back in. Um, today we have some interesting news from our friends over at DisabilityScoop.com. We're surfing the web looking for the latest and greatest news on disabilities and stumbled upon an article that's basically uh, breaking it down real quick as saying kids with disabilities are sent home from school, get less learning time, less mm-hmm. learning uh, potential and ability, not ability, less learning, so like time in the classroom than, than someone without a disability, whether it be behaviors, whether it be, you know, illness or whatever. Right, right. So the article is kind of based around that, and it's a super long one, which you guys will throw a link down in the uh, um, comments or the... It's a good read. Yeah, we'll throw a link down below. I can't think right now. It's too early. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but uh, it basically starts out with saying, this year millions of students have had their schooling curtailed due to COVID, prompting serious discussions about the effects of lost learning time. But a subset of students in special education have been quietly plagued with this problem for decades, often with devastating consequences. Shortening the school day for students with disabilities as punishment for their behavior is illegal, experts say. Instead, schools must support and address the issue issues in the classroom. For the most part, however, schools are not required to justify their decisions to send students home early, nor is any significant data collected in this practice, allowing the problem to remain largely hidden as, well, with most things with disabilities, yeah. they're <laughs> they keep largely... It, they keep it on the hush. <laughs> yeah, so for many students, a shortened day can la- or a shortened school day can last for months or even years, which can have disastrous impact as they miss out on critical mm-hmm. academic, social, and emotional Learning time, this is no surprise. I mean, no, not at all. <laughs> and it's one of those things where it's basically you're saying, um, hey, you have a this you have you have a problem already, and because you have that problem, you're not going to learn. And it's I, I know it's not an easy fix, mm-hmm. you know, um, because some things can be challenging, but we have to look through those challenges and uh, for results and you don't get results by not having people around. Well, and a lot of the time, these sorts of issues get curtailed to like funding, um, you know, they're like the, like the same, the same reason for any sort of brushing an issue under the table. It always comes down to funding time. And as we all know, schools usually have zero resources. I mean, public schools, uh, even private schools sometimes, they just do not have the resources because... Very, very true. You know, teachers are undervalued and underpaid, Mm -hmm. and (laughs) that's just... That's how it works. So, I mean... I had this conversation with um, a a civil service um, employee the other day, and it's amazing how the most important positions that a person has, the lack of financial... You know, um, I mean, how how the financial portion just doesn't add up. Mm-hmm. The responsibility for someone's life is in your hands, but financially, you're making like barely to survive. You yep. know, especially if you if you have a family or if you have any health issues and stuff like that. Now, there are resources, and I suggest everybody go get resources if or look for resources if you are in any of those um, tough spots, especially if you're a tax-paying citizen. Mm-hmm. Like, I, I believe if you're a tax-paying citizen, you need to utilize the resources that people who aren't tax-paying <laughs> citizens um, do. And that's what our individuals are are doing, too. So I'm proud of them. Yeah, and uh, the article goes on. It says, Joel Greenberg, senior staff attorney at the Disability Rights of Oregon, has been pushing for years to get his state to collect information about students on a shortened school day. He says he still frequently sees the problem uh, that families face and estimate he's filed a minimum of 20 complaints with the state about similar cases. In 2016, he tried to get state legislators to propose a bill that, among other things, would require st- School districts to report the number of students who were placed on a shortened schedule for more than 30 days. Uh, the final law was much shorter and less comprehensive than he would liked, and they proposed the mandate to, uh, to collect data on shortened school days was removed entirely, as were provisions that would have specified the limited res- reasons a school district could require a shortened day. The law did, however, say that parents must consent to a shortened day and that a student's IEP team must demonstrate that it considered at least one other option before sending a child home early. Mm. But frustrated that the law didn't go far enough, Greenberg turned to the courts in 2019, Disability Rights Oregon, among others, filed a class action 
action lawsuit against the state Department of Education alleging that hundreds of students had had their days illegally cut short. One advocacy organization reported receiving calls from nearly 280 parents about this issue from September 2016 to December 2018, according to the complaint. The Oregon Department of Education was unable to comment on pending litigation, as they always seem to be, said (laughs) Mark Siegel, communications director. He added that the state was committed to ensuring the full and appropriate implementation of the Individuals with Disabilities Education Act, and the department had taken several steps to ensure districts followed laws. Greenberg said he still sees problems, however. Part of the issue, he said, is that small rural school districts, like around here where we live, um, in particular, lack the resources and training to effectively support students with behavioral challenges. He'd like to see the state go beyond the semi-annual one- or two-day trainings and the topic, and he also provides districts and with experts who can give hands-on assistance on complex cases. Absent such help, even when the state has ruled in his client's favor on complaints, problems have remained. The resolutions to the cases often call for the district to bring an IEP team together and approve a behavior plan, perhaps Mm -hmm. in consultation with a psychologist. But sometimes districts still maintain that students needed a shortened day. Other times students were officially allowed to return to a full day, but parents were called frequently to pick them up early. The school districts still need support, which they aren't getting. Greenberg said the state was not providing anything to help them that was helpful. (laughs) So, <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> I mean, that's Talk a lot of, to take in. I mean, yeah. it's a lot of shade there too. It's pretty. <laughs> it's pretty. Um, I can't think of a better word right now, but sad. The way that these things operate, you, yeah. it, it basically ends up seeing like you have to sue everyone to get anywhere anymore, and it's mm-hmm. it's you know you get caught in this between a rock and a hard place, it's like, where does the money come from? How are we going to fix this? But then, you know, that's that's putting a bigger load on people like teachers and yeah. who are already just under a ton of stress, picking up slack that they're not getting paid for half well, the time. You know, the, the, the harsh reality is it really is going to have to start with the the integration, which I think it has in most, most places. You have people who have disabilities in... Um, typical normal, quote unquote, normal classroom settings. Mm-hmm. And you need that because when it was just the, you know, the special ed classroom per se, it was like, it was still segregated. Like, oh, you go over there and we'll see you at lunch or during lunch or whatever. And it, it's, um, it was, it's a heart, it was a heartbreaking kind of feel because later on in life, People who aren't integrated with the quote unquote normal of society, they don't always know how to act. And then those things turn out to be exactly what they're talking about in school. You know, are these kids really being integrated appropriately? Are um, are the trainings being taught in school now for the teachers, you know, when you're going, when you're a teacher and you're going through your curriculum, I mean, I think, and please people let me know if I'm wrong or not, but I think they're still separated in educational courses for, you know, ed, uh, special education uh, versus, I don't know, like, <laughs> it's, I, I mean, Paul, stop confusing me. <laughs> <laughs> I can't help that, but yeah. And it's, People tend to overlook the uh, benefits of, like, being part of a community. I mm-hmm. mean, disability or not, I mean, you put somebody in a in a secluded place that's away from the normal population. I mean, uh, I mean, humans are community creatures, man. That's what we're like. Everything we do is based on community. That's why we yeah. have, you know, podcasts and Facebook groups and social mm-hmm. gatherings because that's what – just how we are as a, as a, as a creature. So, yeah. Yeah, that is very important. So, you know, and there will never be a total eradication of that, like, stigma with disability, I don't think. I mean, it's just like anything. People, yeah. Kids will always be cruel and make fun of kids, and mm-hmm. whether they're disabled or not, they'll always find something. I mean, but that's right. part of growing up, My you know. kids definitely yeah. find stuff wrong with me. <laughs> <laughs> Every day. Right. But uh, to, to kind of wrap up here. Um, the article went over earlier, a, a family they were following, but, you know, mm-hmm. it wasn't, wasn't super, 
you know, detrimental to the story because a lot of families deal with this. So it's basically saying uh, the family was ultimately able to get their son into a full school day, took drastic action. In 2013, the whole family moved 3,000 miles across the country to Massachusetts where the student could attend a specialized school for students with disabilities. Once enrolled, is placed on an extended day program and it had no trouble handling the longer hours. And the family soon began to notice an immense difference uh and the student had in oregon or the sorry they they noticed an immense difference the issues that the student had while living in oregon like crying screaming self-abuse all went away Mm -hmm. and now at 18 they're able to better communicate using sign language and an ipad and that's you've told stories in the past where you've you've had clients you've worked with that that people basically wrote off and then you just kind of worked at their level and their Mm -hmm. pace and you you saw drastic improvement yes uh and and that's again man that's all there really takes um and we have to ask ourselves as citizens as um people in the healthcare field or what like what are we really willing to either put up with and go through f- for the benefit of somebody else um i think that's the best way that i could say it because i know when i gave selfish selfish lists <laughs> or um does that even make sense selflessly Sel- selflessly Selflessly? Man, I don't know. <laughs> what are you saying? You're confusing I'm, me now. Look, dude, I, I don't know what's <laughs> going on this morning. Um, no, but basically, when you give, I think you receive tenfold. And Oh, absolutely. I, I, I feel as if I give quite a bit, so I'm always on a high from that. <laughs> yeah. But uh, on that note, uh, I want to thank everybody for listening to us here or watching us on YouTube with the Friends for Life's Midweek Mini. Yes, uh, yes. Don't forget to check out our other shows. And as a quick plug before we go, if you're located in Northwest Ohio, we are hiring. Tony, what are we oh, looking goodness. for right now? We're looking for DSPs. Um, of course, me and everybody else who has a company like this, but come on, come on, um, go to friendsforliferc.com. Um, you can check out our website. You can see what we do, how we do it. You can hear all of our podcasts. It's a one-stop hub, but we're looking for dedicated long-term people. We um, have a lot of things to offer as in benefit wise. So Check us out, contact us, and we'll see what goes from there. Yeah, absolutely. So thank you for watching. If you can, check out our other shows. we got the full-length Friends for Life, po- Friends for Life podcast. Jeez, Man, say that one ten tongue, times fast. <laughs> t- t- and, uh, and we also have our Medical Monday show. We've got a few trainings up online now, and we have some new stuff coming at you very soon that we've been working very hard awesome, on. Awesome stuff. So we appreciate you. If you are watching this, hit that subscribe button, and we'll see you next week with another midweek. Geek Mini, Tony hit it. Woo.